So uh, moving to the uh, example uh, of, of RCT. Um, so this is a, a paper by Pascaline Dupa and, and Jessica Cohen that came out in, in Quarterly Journal of uh, Economics. Um, and, and it talks about uh, uh, what is the so ideal policy to maximize uptake of uh, um, insecticide uh, treated bed nets uh, to prevent malaria in Africa. Okay, And they sort of uh, contribute to the debate uh, about to what extent uh, uh, a subsidy should be given for to, to sort of uh, uh, maximize uh, uh, uptake. And, and there is a debate with respect to you know whether we should have cost sharing in terms of the only it, it should be partially subsidized and, and part of the cost should be borne by the by the people who are buying it um, in order to motivate them to use it sort of uh, you know, this sort of one argument. The other side is that uh, that it should be given out for free because uh, because that would actually maximize uptake and usage. So they contribute this debate by doing a randomized control trial where uh, there are multiple treatment arms so so there are various uh, values of subsidy that is given uh, so these are the various treatments and one of the uh, treatment arm is 100% subsidy so so this is given out for free and they go and check uh, you know how many of the households in various of these treatment so now there are several treatment groups each each treatment group correspond to a particular uh, value of the subsidy given so the free uh, free bed net uh, uh, um, treatment group gets 100% subsidy and but others get less than 100% so they have to pay, pay a little bit little amount of money and then there is a control group that do not receive any subsidy so they have to pay the market price and and then the researchers go in and, and uh, collect data on usage at the household level uh, and then what they find is basically that uh, giving out for free actually increases substantially increases uptake and usage which kind of sort of their argument is that it overwhelms the whatever extra money that the intervention is going to cost in terms of giving the full subsidy uh, the benefits uh, far outweighs this additional cost of, of funding it uh, completely so so that's sort of one uh, policy relevant question uh, uh, you know, malaria is a big uh, 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 health problem and it causes a lot of uh, uh, high mortality among children uh, 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 and pregnant mothers uh, um, in Africa and therefore, you know, this is an important policy on which, you know, government should have some idea in terms of treatment effects and, and there they contribute by saying that actually giving out free indeed uh, maximizes treatment, uh, maximizes treatment effects. And they do it using using the RCT. Um, moving to the uh, second uh, method, so so this method is called difference in difference estimation. Um, so um, in in this method, uh, we uh, have a treatment and a control group who are not necessarily randomized, right? Or where uh, where treatment assignment is is not necessarily uh, uh, randomized by the researchers. So often what happens is that uh, um, some some areas or some people get treatment but it is, it is done in a kind of a haphazard way. Maybe uh, you know say for example taking the, the bank uh, branch opening and, and savings account opening example maybe the, the bank uh, is following some kind of administrative rule in terms of which uh, uh, areas to open first, in which areas to go and open their branches first and, and which areas to open later. And so you kind of track these opening of, of these bank, bank branches uh, um, across you know, a large set of uh, villages. And what you want to see is you want to measure the savings uh, uh, of, of the people who live in the villages that gets treated, so that's your treatment group versus the people who, who uh, living in villages where there is no bank branch that have opened so far. So that's the control group. But you want to also uh, uh, use the time dimension. So the fact that you know bank branch get uh, opened in a particular point in time. Uh, so you could potentially go back and collect data on the savings of, of these individuals 
before the bank branches were opened both in the villages where the bank branches eventually opened as all as also in the in the control villages where the bank branches did not open so you collect data uh, about the individual savings in those villages uh, before that period opening of bank branch in certain villages as well as after opening of the bank branch both in the treatment of the control villages okay and what do you do is you first calculate the difference in the outcome variable uh, in the after period so after the bank branch gets opened in the treatment villages you calculate the the difference between the savings in the treatment village and the control village in the after period but since you also collected data uh, for the previous period you also look at the difference between the outcome variables the savings rate in among the treatment villages but this is in the pre period so these treatment villages have not received the treatment yet but you call them the treatment group because they they are the ones that will get treated so so you look at the difference between the savings rate of the treatment villages and the control villages before the treatment happens so that's that's the that's another difference and so you look at the difference of these two differences so differences in outcome between treatment and control after the treatment happens and difference between treatment and control group before the treatment happens okay and so the difference of these two differences is your estimate of of the the the, the treatment effect of opening brand branches on on savings rate so so uh, um so that's that's sort of is the idea so so let me let me sort of demonstrate this pictorially so here are the 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 data so suppose the red uh, is the treatment group and the blue is the control group so so and the treatment happen at a particular point in time here but you have collected data about say their savings rate of the villages villagers in both the treatment and the control villages before bank branches were opened in the red villages and after the bank branches are opened in the red villages right so so this is the before and this is the after so before uh, there is already a difference. So, so red branches, uh, uh, sorry, red villages already have a higher savings than than uh, 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 blue blue villages. But that's fine uh, because you will be differencing this uh, that difference out from the post difference. So you have a pre difference, which is this sort of average gap between the red and the blue in the pre period, pre treatment period. In the post treatment treatment period, you have another gap between the red and the blue so you want to subtract the pre gap from the post gap to get this sort of increase in due to the, the treatment so so whatever additional uh, difference that arises in the post treatment period you say that that is because only because of the treatment and hence that's the treatment effect okay so so that's the idea and the more number of observations you have in the pre and the post period the better because then you can control for a large number of you know for a large period you can find out the average difference between the red and the blue suppose you had only one period before the uh, uh, before the treatment so you had only one treatment period then you would have only one observation one set of observations for the blue and the red villages and so 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 this difference may be very noisy maybe it sort of you know here it's sort of a fake data so it's it's very nicely you know, it's very nice and smooth but it could be sort of going up and down so so if you have multiple periods you could sort of look at averages which where the average would be much of a much more precise measure in the pre period and same for post period if you have more data in the post period again you can look at averages and, and get a more precise estimate of the treatment effect um, so so that's the idea so the idea is is it so it's called difference in difference because of this you are you are you are right the idea is that there might be you know these these red villages may be different from blue villages in because the treatment was not assigned randomly because it was some sort of you know some administrative rule that you know, the bank was following or some kind of government say immunization policy governments wanted to immunize some areas first or some other areas later so it was following some kind of rule in order to immunize uh, in, in order to uh, cover areas, geographic areas over time, so so you follow, so so you know that the treatment group initially could be very different from the control group, so there could be average differences between treatment and control to begin with, 
but the point is that you 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 assume that this difference would have continued so that's your counterfactual would have continued uh, similar in a similar fashion had there been no treatment happening but because there is a treatment happening there might be some additional changes and so you difference the pre period from the post period difference and the, the whatever that is left out you you say that that is because of uh, that is because of the, the treatment and so that's your treatment effect so uh, 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 what does it look in terms of regression equation so suppose you have this outcome variable y uh, uh, so so that say savings of individuals i in say year t or month t whatever you know it depends on what data you are working at some at some time time stamp is t is the time stamp at particular uh, point in time so you have data for a savings of individuals say for every month or every year and ti is the treatment group so these are the these are the people who who got access to bank uh, bank branch okay so that's that comprises the treatment group uh, uh, now this treatment group got treatment only after a particular point in time right because in your entire data you have both the pre treatment and the post treatment period so so uh, so the treatment group don't get the treatment in the pre period so that's why there is a separate variable called post which varies at the level of the time and the level of say month so after say particular month uh, uh, after only after that the treatment gets assigned so treatment so so all the periods in the uh, in the uh, all the periods following the treatment post takes value 1 so post is a dummy that takes value 1 if t is uh, uh, the post treatment period if t is pre treatment period then post takes value 0 for that t similarly capital uh, ti is 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 a is a dummy it takes value 1 if if the individual is in the treated group and it takes value 0 if it's in the control group and then there's a, a interaction of T, uh, ti times post okay and and the beta 3 the coefficient on the interaction term is the causal effect uh, supposedly the causal effect of this intervention in the post period on the outcome variable okay so so what is the idea the idea is that suppose you are in the control group in the pre pre treatment period so then if you are in the pre treatment period your post value takes 0 and you are in the control group so your uh, your your ti is also 0 you are not in treatment you are in control so ti is 0 because you are in control and you are in pre period so your post is also 0 so all the all of these terms are 0 so the average value of y is just alpha because epsilon average value of epsilon is 0 so so that's what i have written here so alpha is the value of your uh, outcome variable which is say in this case savings for the control group so these are the no program group so the program is basically say the the intervention so so bank branch opening or immunization program so in the for the no program group the control group in the pre period the the treat, the average value is alpha in the post period the same group so ti is remains 0 but in the post period post becomes 1 so it becomes alpha plus beta 2 beta 3 there is no beta 3 because t is still 0 so, so this term is 0 so this becomes for the for the control group in the post period the value becomes alpha plus beta 2 so in the post period notice that this guy did, did not did not get treatment even then their outcome increased could potentially increase beta 2 could be positive right so your outcome could in would in could potentially increase by beta 2 so beta 2 estimates how much of the outcome increases for the control group in the post period for the program group in the pre period it was alpha plus beta 1 why because for the treatment group t is already 1 so you have alpha plus beta 1 the rest is 0 so in the pre period the treatment group has average value of outcome variable alpha plus beta 1 in the post period both beta 2 and beta 3 get switched on because both are 1 for treatment group in the post period so then the post period the effect is total value uh, average value is alpha plus beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3 so for the program period 
if i compare pre period and post for it, for the program uh, uh, the, the the treatment group for the program individuals if i compare pre and post period the difference is beta 2 plus beta 3 right so so for the for the treatment group the outcome increases by beta 2 plus beta 3 but for the control group that did not receive the treatment their outcome also increased their outcome increased by beta 2 so now what is the effect of the program then? The effect of the program is difference between this and this. This is the additional effect that is happening because of the program. If the program hadn't happened, it would have still, you know, even for the program villages, it would have increased by beta 2. But because actually the intervention happened, it increased by something more than potentially more than beta 2. So the difference between these two gives you the difference in difference estimate, which is beta 3. So that's your DID estimate, which is the causal effect of the program on, on, uh, on outcome. You could have arrived at the beta 3 by doing the differencing on the other way. So in the pre-period, the difference between uh, non-program and program is beta 1. So, so if I go back, so that's this difference. In the pre-period, the difference between red and blue is beta 1, right? So that's, that's this. Beta 1 is the difference in the pre-period between red and blue beta 1 plus beta 3 is the difference between red and blue in the post period so again if i go back beta 1 plus beta 2 is the difference beta 1 plus beta 3 is the difference between red and blue in the post period so that's beta 1 plus beta 3 so the difference between pre and post so the difference between this red and blue here and the red and blue here is beta 3 so it's the same thing you can you can think you, know, you can analyze it in both ways so so then that gives you the difference in difference estimate okay um, let's talk about an example so you know this is this is from a particular uh, uh, um, intervention that was uh, uh, implemented by the, the Poverty Action Lab in MIT. Uh, um, you can read about this example in the in the Pomeranz paper. So, so you know, they are looking at this uh, uh, some some program intervention, uh, which is this sort of uh, and, and their outcome variable is uh, 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 grades of the children. Okay, and, and what is the intervention that they're looking at? It's a tutoring program. So, so there was a tutoring program to, to increase the, the learning outcome of the children and it was given only on a subpopulation of the children. So, so, so that's the treatment group, that's the treated group, okay. And then there is untreated group, the kids who did not receive the treatment, the tutoring program. So, so they went and first, before the program got implemented, they went and first collected data on, on, on their uh, 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 grades. In, 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 um, whatever subject on which they are receiving the tutoring. So, so this is the pre-program grades. So already you see there is a difference between, between the treated and the untreated. So, so it's not that treated and the untreated are identical groups, but that's fine in this, in this difference in difference estimate. You can, you can have a treated and untreated group to be different. So you see that treated group, the group that received tutoring were had lower grades than, than the untreated group. Okay. However, after the, the program happened, uh, uh, the, the treated, group, uh, treated groups, uh, um, grade improved, but so did the untreated groups grade as well, right? So the question is, did the increase in the treated groups, uh, uh, increase in the treated groups grades greater than the increase in the control groups grades right so that's this gives you the counterfactual if the treatment hadn't happened the treated groups grades would have increased by same amount as as given by the difference between uh, untreated groups post and pre program difference so the for the untreated group the difference is 19.6 so so even though the untreated group did not receive any tutoring program even then their learning outcome improved their grades improved by 19.6 so, so the assumption is that if the treated group hadn't received the treatment, their outcome would also have increased by 19.6.
but what you see is their actual grade increased by 26.4 so the difference between these two differences gives you a, a measure of 6.82 and that you attribute it to to the effect of the program so so the tutoring program actually increase the grades on average uh, uh, by 6.82 okay so that's that's the that's the interpretation um, we need two kind of assumptions uh, um, in in this uh, the first assumption you know for for this kind of for for this estimate to be interpreted as a causal effect of of uh, treatment or or the intervention um, the first assumption is what is called the parallel trend assumption so the assumption here the first assumption says that the the movement in the y variable the outcome variable uh, was parallel across the treatment and the control group before the treatment happened so in the pre period if we sort of plot the the uh, outcome variable for the treatment and the control group they could be different on average that's fine but they should move whatever trend there is it's it's parallel it's not that one is sort of uh, moving very differently than the other so so it's it's like this so so the gap is not already so if the gap was already widening then then it would have been a problem because then you would you would think that part of this widening gap here is because of the early you know the sort of pre trend of of widening to begin with but here you see that you know the in this in this graph uh, the red and the blue trend is kind of parallel to each other so 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 that's the parallel trend assumption so this this you can verify so this assumption can be verified in the data if you have enough pre period data then you can actually you know check test whether uh, this these slopes are identical for the red and the blue so um, so that's that's the first assumption you need parallel trend across the treatment and the control group in the pre period so so then you can so that you can sort of uh, attribute the increased gap in the post period to, to the treatment the second assumption is that the assignment of treatment is exogenous is some you know sort of uh, is is arbitrary is is exogenous uh, so so it's not that uh, there is a there is a tutoring program and students are choosing whether to go for the tutoring program or not so so uh, it's it's there is no selection bias involved because if there is selection bias again then part of the treatment effects could still be driven by the unobservable features of the individual kids who choose uh, to to enroll themselves in a tutoring program right so those could kids will be maybe much more motivated than than those who don't choose to be part of a tutoring program and that could be driving part of the treatment effect so then then your estimate could be biased so so the idea is that uh, there is no choice on the part of the individuals uh, in terms of uh, uh, become you know choosing to self select into into the treatment group so 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 you have to sort of then argue that you can apply this did if you are suppose you want to uh, use this uh, did uh, estimation method in in your context then you have to argue that this treatment assignment happened because of some kind of arbitrary rule maybe you know so the tutoring program happened because of uh, some kind of government policy that kind of uh, uh, targeted certain kind of villages where you know all kids got got the tutoring so so that there was no selection involved in the part of the students who could choose themselves into the program uh, even though those villages could be on average different from the control villages uh, it it still have to be the case that the treatment you know the treatment assignment is is uh, uh, um, there is no self selection involved in, in in the treatment assignment so so the, that sort of will address the selection bias problem of course you have, you have still have to argue that there are no other uh, stuff happening parallelly so so you have to still uh, demonstrate that you know you, your estimate do not suffer from uh, uh, um, this omitted variable bias so it's it's not the case that when there was tutoring program there were some other supplementary programs that are also happening uh, you have to ensure that you have to you have to argue that that's not happening so 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 uh, so that sort of uh, uh, is is the difference in difference example 
uh, let me now spend the rest of the time in discussing uh, sort of you know the the third and the last method that that I'll talk about today, which is sort of you know probably the most uh, sophisticated method in terms of uh, analysis. So so this is the regression discontinuity design or RDD. So what is a regression discontinuity design? So here. Um, you know this is this can be applied in a context where the assignment of treatment is based on some kind of threshold rule uh, on some continuous variable what do i mean by this so you know let's take concrete example it will make it clear uh, so so for example in brazil the the evm machines uh, during elections so so these electronic voting machines during elections uh, were introduced for the first time in 1998. Now, not all uh, uh, um, areas got EVM machines at the same time. Uh, so, the election commission in Brazil um, had this rule that a municipality will be under this EVM uh, if its population is bigger than 40,000. If its population is below 40,000, it will not get EVM in 1998 election. It will be under the usual paper ballot. And in the next election, uh, four years down the line in 2002, um, uh, the, the, uh, the election, the, 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 rest of the, uh, the, popul the rest of the municipalities will be covered under EVM. So, so in the next election after 1998, in 2002, 100% will get EVM. But in 1998, only a subset will get EVM. So here the treatment is the EVM, whether a municipality uh, uh, um, gets an EVM, uh, gets to vote under EVM machine or not. Okay, that's the treatment. And the assignment of the treatment, whether a municipality gets the EVM or not, depends on a threshold rule. So, above 40,000 treatment, below 40,000 no treatment, on a continuous variable, which is population of the municipality. So, so, so the idea is that if you sort of stack in municipalities uh, from low to high population, you can see that all the population, all the municipalities that are below 40,000, they got zero treatment, TI equal to zero, they got no AVM. The municipality which are above the 40,000 suddenly got AVM, uh, uh, right? So their treatment is one for all the municipalities that are to the right of 40,000, all the municipalities to the left of 40,000, they got EVM 0. So, you have this kind of a graph. Okay. So, that is what I mean by, by threshold rule on some continuous variable. Here, the continuous variable is population and the threshold rule is 40,000. Okay. Um, and there are now several papers that uses various kinds of contexts where this rule can be applied. It looks like it, you know, it can only apply it in very specialized context. That's true, but a lot of treatment assignment that that we as researchers are interested in uh, seems to be using various kinds of treatment rule, right? Uh, there are a couple of examples mentioned here. So, for example, uh, during Vietnam War, the American Army dropped bombs in uh, uh, villages, uh, uh, Vietnamese villages, using some kind of discrete. Uh, some kind of threshold rule. So, so they used to, you know, the uh, the U.S. Army used to collect data about to what extent uh, uh, the Vietnamese villages um, are worse or better in terms of security, and and they use kind of, you know, they they use these scores of security to create discrete categories. And and what this uh, meant was that. The score which is just below, so for example, say suppose there is two category high and low, uh, and if your score is say bit, you know say uh, uh, 5.51, it will it will get rounded off to six, and which will be categorized as a uh, uh, worse security village. But if if your uh, score based on this survey is 5.49, then it will be rounded off to five and. It will, it will be categorized as relatively uh, high security village 
and and you know, the 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 US army dropped more bombs in villages which were classified into this high category uh, um, villages versus low category villages so a small change so here the the disc, the threshold is 0.5 on this continuous variable which is a score about security that they calculate using the village surveys in vietnam so 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 the moment it crossed 0.5 you get assigned into the treatment group uh, and and you uh, the villages get significantly more bombings versus those who fall slightly below 0.5 uh, get significantly less bombings right so so you get discontinuity in the amount of bombs that get dropped and that can have significant uh, impact on on state formation and and development outcomes going forward i worked on a, a research project where i uh, looked at um, a world bank training program of local officials in villages uh, in in the state of west bengal now the way the world bank you know the world bank couldn't train all the local villages in all or uh, 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 in, uh, in in the entire uh, state of west bengal so they selected only a sub sample of villages to to do the training program uh, how did they select this so so the 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 west bengal government used to have this surveys where they would collect information about how well each village is performing in terms of governance and they created some score based on this so higher score means better performing village right it's similar to this vietnam example and world bank took those scores as given and they they basically selected uh, uh, the top 60% uh, uh, from of villages from that score list so the, what that gives you is that you know the the village that is sort of right above the 60% gets assigned to the treatment and villages that are just below the 60% cut off uh, uh, do not receive the training they do not receive the treatment they become part of the control group so again uh, uh, you have a you have a assignment of treatment here is the world bank training program based on a, a threshold rule on a continuous variable what is a continuous variable here it's the the scores are called evaluation scores uh, created by the the government of west bengal and and the cutoff rule was this sort of well, the 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 60% of the from the maximum okay so 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 that again uh, 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 is sort of fits into this criteria now why the term discontinuity you know why is it called regression discontinuity design because treatment assignment as a function of this continuous variable is discontinuous at the threshold you know just below uh, um, the threshold it's the treatment assignment is zero uh, and it's zero you know further below at threshold it jumps to one and then it goes remains at one okay so so it's sort of it's a step function so there's discontinuity at the threshold in the in the treatment assignment okay now if the treatment causes some change in the outcome variable so for example in let's let's think about the brazilian case first so in the brazilian example uh, what is the outcome variable that uh, that uh, uh, this evm treatment might have, uh, have an impact on so this researcher uh, he he was basically uh, uh, interested in looking at um, to uh, to what extent people's vote gets counted uh, uh, um, uh even uh, so so you know often vote gets rejected even if you go cast a vote because you know in a, in a paper ballot for example if you if you don't uh, uh, stamp it properly or write you know tick mark properly then then your vote gets this rejected when it gets counted and so so you know voting uh, uh, is based on uh, winners and losers are decided based only on the valid votes now in brazil before this evm thing came in people had to actually write down the name of the their candidate in order in order to be in order to cast a ballot so so they have, would have to be literate and so a lot of people who are poorer and who are not literate they would not be able to write the names of the candidates well and so even if they would cast votes their vote will not get counted right so they basically were effectively disenfranchised uh, even though you know it was it was sort of universal suffrage everybody could vote but their votes will systematically gets rejected because they will not be able to write their names and so uh, if you look at the valid what percentage of of uh, uh, voters who turned out to vote 
uh, were able to cast valid votes, that percentage was relatively small on average across municipalities because of this problem. And so, so after EVM, you know, they would have to only press buttons and, you know, there were pictures of, of the candidates along with numbers uh, assigned to, to each candidate. So, so it's, it was very hard to sort of cast a, a wrong ballot in an EVM. And so the percentage of, so the hypothesis was that, you know, this EVM would increase the, the percentage of valid votes uh, um, in election and it will disproportionately benefit these, uh, the people who are illiterate and poor. So, so that was the sort of uh, hypothesis. So their first point then, the author's first point is that if this treatment is indeed effective in reducing uh, rejected votes or increasing valid votes, then if I plot what percentage of votes are valid as a function of the population in a municipality, so for every municipality I know its population and I know what percentage of vote cast in that municipality was considered valid, right? I can plot it and again I can stack uh, municipalities in terms of their population from, from low to high. I know that at 40,000 suddenly uh, in 98 election the, 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 the municipalities got EVM and so if I, if it is indeed the case that EVM causes increase in valid votes then I should, if I plot the valid vote percentage, it will jump at threshold 40,000, okay? Because at 40,000 suddenly the municipalities start getting uh, EVMs in only 98 and, and so, so, so then there should be a jump in valid votes. And this is exactly uh, what the author finds. So, so this blue line is actually plotting the valid votes as a percentage of turnout, as a fraction of turnout in 1998, where there is indeed discontinuity in assignment of treatment. So, so people, municipalities to the right of 40,000, they had EVM, to the left they didn't have EVM. So now the author is plotting the average valid vote percentage and it's hovering around you know 75 let's say so 75 percent of votes guessed uh, 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 um, uh, are accepted and so so a large percentage so 25 percent of the vote get rejected uh, in the municipalities uh, uh, that that uh, use as paper ballot but right when you cross the threshold of 40,000 the municipality here so, you know, the point is that the municipality here is very similar to the municipality here, right? They had both had close to 40,000 population. One had maybe 39,500, another 40,500. So, so their populations are very similar. So, you know, they, so there shouldn't be any sudden jump in their uh, uh, valid vote percentage, right? So, it should be continuous. But if there is a jump, as, as the author finds, then it can only be attributed to the fact that um, that these guys had EVM. So, so this vertical jump, so that's the discontinuity here in the outcome variable. So this discontinuity in outcome variable can be attributed uh, to, to the treatment, which is the EVM in this case. So the EVM increases valid vote percentage from say, so this is close to 80 from 80 to 90, so about 10, at least 10 percentage point increase in, in valid votes uh, due to EVM. And notice he plots the, the valid vote percentage in the, in the 94 election, so that's the green line. There was no treatment there, right? So the 40,000 guys also, above 40,000 guys also use paper ballot as, as the below 40,000 municipality. So then again, so there you the author do not does not find any discontinuity in the outcome variable on the around the around this threshold which makes sense because there was no evm to begin with in the election after this 98 which is in 2002 again there was no change because now everybody got evm in the next election so again there is no sudden jump at 40000 the only jump is in 98 okay so so this tells us that it must be because of the evm Right. So, so now the question is, so, so that's sort of, that's, that's the idea. 
so now the question is how do you how do you estimate this jump okay so the first thing you have to do is select observations which are surrounding 40000 so so you select what is called a bandwidth you select a bandwidth around 40000 and you only consider say municipalities which are within that bandwidth so say plus minus say 10000 population so so for, so 30000 to 50000 right so that's the plus minus 10 10000 around the threshold so all municipalities within this bandwidth are considered in your sample so you don't consider uh, uh, municipalities that are really far away from from the bandwidth uh, from the from the threshold so so now you know you can arbitrarily choose this bandwidth but now there are sort of uh, uh, um, computational methods algorithms that optimize in terms of choosing this bandwidth and we can we can talk about it um, on thursday but um, but given this bandwidth you want to then uh, see whether there is a jump but you don't want to find out just you know you, you don't want to calculate the jump based on the average values to the right and average values to the left because you know these these uh, relationships could be different on the two sides so for example here it is increasing uh, on the left but uh, flat on the right so you have to account for the fact that you know these values sort of change differently with the with this continuous variable by the way this continuous variable is also called the running variable as i've mentioned in, in the previous case so this continuous variable based on which treatment is assigned uh, is called running running variable so 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 you have to consider whether you have to cons allow for the possibility that your outcome variable has a different relationship with the running variable to the left of the threshold and to the right so on the left it is increasing for example on the right it is flat in this case it could be something else in some other case so, so let me show you the, the regression equation. Uh, so, so suppose vi is the running variable. So in the case of say uh, uh, the Brazilian example, i is say the municipality um, and v is the, the population in the municipality. Okay, And k is the threshold. So k is 40,000. So if population in municipality i is bigger than uh, 40,000 then this is a dummy value that dummy value takes one so that's your treatment so this this is a treatment this, this is an indicator variable which takes value one if vi is bigger than k and it takes value zero if vi is less, less than equal to k so 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 this is your treatment assignment and you want to estimate the effect of the treatment on the outcome variable so outcome variable is valid votes let's say so gamma is your effect of EVM on valid votes but you can't just compare uh, uh, treatment and control because you have to consider the possibility as I said uh, that that VI and Y can be differently correlated uh, on the left and the right hand side of the variable uh, on the threshold so that's that's this part what is this this is saying Beta one is the f you know is the correlation between population and turnout uh, sorry and, and valid votes to the left of the threshold when i equals to zero when i equals to one sorry this should be k this is a typo is the same same indicator variable as this when uh, for the treatment sample the the correlation could be different from beta one it could be, it is actually beta one plus beta two when i becomes 1 the relationship between y and vi is, bet, is is given by this linear term beta 1 plus beta 2 when i is 0 the relationship between yi and vi is given by just beta 1 right so so i'm allowing this beta 2 to be different from 0 meaning that i'm allowing the relationship between the running variable and outcome variable to be different on the left hand side of the threshold as well as on the right hand side of the threshold so, so this beta 2 is if it's different from 0 then it will give you that you know the left and the right the, the relationship is different so after allowing for this change in slope on the two sides so after allowing that the slope here and here might be different you want to measure the vertical distance at that threshold so that's what the gamma is giving you what is the difference when 
suddenly this indicator variable turns 1 from 0 okay so so gamma is basically then so your your objective is to find out this vertical gap at this threshold and and this is the regression equation that gives you because it allows for a differential slope between outcome and the running variable on the two sides of the threshold and then estimates the jump okay so that's that's the idea so then you say gamma is the causal effect of the treatment on the outcome uh, to show uh, uh, pictorially so this is sort of you know again consider this this uh, uh, um, graph from from the Pomeranz paper so suppose this is the this is the uh, relationship between outcome variable and running variable on the left hand side of the threshold here is a threshold after which treatment is assigned to all the observations to the right of the threshold and you see that this line jumps here and then it goes like this so so what you do is you basically allow this slope this slope and this slope to be different and then you estimate this jump the idea being that this again you have to think in terms of counterfactual so what is the assumption the assumption is if this treatment hadn't happened to all these observations their outcome variable would have moved continuously like this okay because these guys got this treatment it jumped here so that's the, the, the hence this is the causal effect of of uh, the treatment on outcome variable okay let me give you this example from the from the paper that i said i, I worked on on this west bengal uh, world bank project so so here is the treatment assignment so this world bank training program was uh, 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 given to officials in villages which had a score above some threshold score Okay, and or not the people, the villages that had below the threshold score were not part of the program. So what I did is that I cal, I just you know deducted this threshold score from everybody's score. So if if so, I call it the call that net score. So if the net score is positive, meaning that then your score is bigger than the threshold score. So then you are assigned to the treatment. If your score is net score is negative, meaning that your villages score is below the threshold score then you don't assign to uh, treatment so you're in control so so this is the the name of the program was isgp so so i'm i'm saying isgp program can be either one or zero the status can be either one or zero zero meaning that you are not part of the program one meaning you're part of the program so if i just plot program with uh, status as a function of this net evaluation score i get this jump pretty much so so there was you know there was not much the data was pretty clean in the sense that you do see pretty much everybody who had negative score were not part of the program and pretty much everybody who who had a positive score were part of the program right so the question is you know what what pro, what is the effect of this program that that i am interested in examining so so uh, we looked at one specific outcome which is to what extent uh, um, parties uh, local local politicians uh, switch their party affiliation in the next election okay so you you know that you know uh, politicians often switch parties right so for example rotiradikta sindhya was you know a congress member for a long time suddenly now he has switched parties and become a bjp member this is much more common at the village level so at the village level the politicians are uh, switch parties much more frequently and 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 we want to see whether because of this world bank program the the politicians who are uh, in power at the at the village level they suddenly increased their party switching probability the idea was that you know this program also gave a lot of money and and the state government kind of manipulated the allocation of this money uh, that came as part of the training program and and the local politicians realized that if they switch their party affiliation to the 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 incumbent party the party that was in power in the state in west bengal then they'll get more money so so this incentive uh, resulted in in them switching into uh, uh, the the incumbent party uh, much more uh, frequently and and so so the the idea is that if indeed this program resulted in manipulation of money and hence 
this politician switching parties more frequently. Then if I again plot party switching rates of villages uh, 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 across this, this range of scores. So, so I start with the village with a say you know minus 20 score and plot its uh, uh, party switching plot, plot the party switching rate of of the politicians there and then the party switching rate of the polit of the villages which is just uh, uh, above minus 20 and so on and go up to zero and then go to the positive then if indeed the program resulted in increasing party switching I should see again a jump in the party switching rate. At the threshold and again that's exactly what we find. We find that the party switching rate was kind of uh, going up and down on the left but suddenly the moment you move to the right side of the threshold uh, these villages suddenly see a jump in the party switching rate and this is significantly high. So here the average is about 15 and here it's average is about 30 so it's about 15 percentage point jump. So, so the party switching rate doubles from 15 it becomes 30 percent right uh, 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 um, at the at the threshold so so the idea is that then you know there was nothing different between the villages which are just to the right and just to the left of the threshold there was nothing different between them except the fact that the the right villages received this world and training program so any jump in the in the outcome variable can be attributed to uh, this world bank program so, 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 so from that we can claim that this program resulted in this increase in party switching rate. Uh, okay, so that's this is sort of a you know this is a more uh, sophisticated exercise, and 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 we can talk about how to go about implementing it uh, in 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 practice in in terms of in a, in a context involving data. Um, one last uh, uh, slide so. So this also requires some assumption in order to sort of have a, a valid uh, a regression discontinuity design. Um, what assumption does it require? It requires primarily requires two assumptions. The first is that there should not be any manipulation of this running variable. It can't be, for example, that in the Brazilian example, uh, the the municipalities which are right around the threshold. Suppose you know they knew from beforehand that there is this policy coming. Uh, then, if suppose it's possible that the the the, the municipalities that are just below forty thousand population, um, they in order to get uh, the EVM, they manipulated their population numbers to be right above forty thousand to get the to get the EVM. Okay. Uh, or in the case of West Bengal World Bank program, if the if the local village village politicians knew that uh, you know people with above this threshold evaluation score can get this World Bank program and can therefore can potentially get more money, uh, then they could sort of manipulate this evaluation score potentially by by uh, 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 sort of. Uh, um, uh, having uh, having uh, deals with the, the bureaucrats who are in charge of uh, computing these scores and and just get in get to the right side of the threshold uh, so that you know they become a part of the program now the question is can we detect it using data that there is some manipulation going on and the idea is the the answer is yes we can if indeed there is manipulation going on then you should see if you just plot the density of the running variable in the observation meaning how many villages have minus 20 uh, um, evaluation score how many have minus 10 how many have minus 5 how many has minus 2.5 and so on and then at 0 and how many has 0 0.1 how many has 0 0.5 uh, 1 5 0 uh, 10 etc so if you plot the density of observations uh, uh, in uh, in terms of their their uh, 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 relative you know relative uh, um, how many observations you have in uh, around each value of the running variable then if there is manipulation then you should see a jump at the threshold in the ma in the density meaning that if it is in the case that you know these minus score guys 
are manipulating their scores to get into the right then you should see a much less mass here much fewer observation which which would be there to the left of the threshold and there will be much larger number of villages which would be just to the right of the threshold so you will see a gap in the in the number of observations to the left to the right so if you draw the density graph then it will not be continuous it will there will be a jump here as well the moment you see jump in the density you see that you know that there is manipulation right because then you know that people from the left have sort of selected themselves into people uh, uh, um, to become uh, to become a part of the program okay so 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 we plotted this graph for example in the west bengal case and you see a perfect continuity of the density at the threshold so the the the, the number of observations just to the left and just to the right are very similar so that tells us that there is no manipulation going on. So this test is called McCrary test. It was proposed by a researcher named McCrary. And so, so now there are Stata commands that, that does it for you. It will produce this graph for you. So that's, that's the first assumption. And the second assumption is that uh, if indeed there was no manipulation, uh, then and if it is indeed the case that you know this threshold was kind of you know arbitrarily decided, it is, it is kind of 40,000. Uh, a population or this sort of you know 60% uh, uh, top 60% will be part of the World Bank program whatever so this threshold is kind of arbitrarily decided then if you look at some other variable uh, before this treatment got assigned if you collect information about this baseline variable then that should not have any jump right so that should move continuously around the threshold so 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 for example in the in the Brazilian case if I can go back to the Brazilian uh, uh, graph, so so this is you know this is this green line which is the pre uh, period election, the 1994 election. There we should not see any jump; it should be continuous. So so that's what this is saying um, that uh, any other characteristics or outcome variable in the pre treatment period, if you have the data that should move continuously around the threshold that should not have any jump so 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 if these two are true and again these two assumptions can be tested using data right so so here is the test for metrary for the west bengal case and so if these two assumptions are true then people are convinced that okay first there was no manipulation in the in the in the running variable to to either sort of selectively go inside the treatment group or come out of the ins, uh, treatment group there was no uh, manipulation and second all other variables in the pre period or baseline uh, period uh, um, they, they move continuously at the threshold but we see the outcome variable changing discontinuously and hence it's much more convincing that then that distant continuity can be uh, attributed to, to, to the uh, treatment so so this is sort of one one very nice uh, um, estimation method that we have to, to assign to in estimate causal effect of treatment on outcome. So these are the three broad uh, uh, methods that are out there. I have not talked about the instrument variable analysis. Uh, I think you have covered this in the in the in your uh, econometrics course before. But again, this is something that we can discuss on Thursday. Uh, so so let me stop here and 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 see you on Thursday. Goodbye.